good try. <laughs> you have to bifurcate it. Did she deserve the honor? Probably not. Is she brave? Of course she's brave. All those years invested as, as the sports legend to come out transgender is horribly difficult. It is the most difficult thing you can do. I've been overseas. I've flown uh, uh, helicopter missions, surveillance missions. I've been shot, stabbed. Being brave is being yourself. And being transgender is it's about the bravest thing you can do. Did the, she deserve the award? Yes. Why are we mainstreaming delusion? Uh, it's not delusion. Why, why not would delusion. you call it delusion? Because Bruce, Caitlyn Jenner, I'll call him Caitlyn Jenner. No, because it's that's her. The, You're not being polite to the pronoun. Because disrespect. It, okay, forget about the disrespect. Facts don't care about your feelings. It turns out that every chromosome, every cell in Caitlyn Jenner's body is male with the exception of some of his sperm cells. You it turns out that his brain structure is male. Wait, I need it to... turns out that he still has all of his male appendages. But How this... he feels on the inside is irrelevant but... to the question of his biological sex. I'm not, I don't agree with that. I'm not on that train. <laughs> I'm not on that train. <laughs> she she wants spoke. to be you called she. I'm going to call her she. I just have a problem with the message and the messenger. Zoe, well, let's, let's, now let's, I'm going to do two things. I want to re reiterate what Zoe said, which is the bifurcation of the courage to come forward after a lifetime as a male and a certain kind of a male versus did she deserve this award. Listen, the awards, what are award ceremonies except an opportunity to catch some eyes? Especially and, the ESPN. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's like e e ESPN, well, well done, ABC. Yeah. They did yeah. exactly what their job was, oh, to attract listen. eyes. They yeah. did it. That's what award ceremonies are for. But in terms of the science behind gender uh, dysphoria, you, you're very familiar with that, Zoe. Very it's familiar. Like, it's not about the chromosome. Excuse me, the chromosomes within we our both know nuclei. That yeah, chromosomes go ahead. don't necessarily mean you're male or female. Gender. With gender. Gender of identity. Go ahead. No, so Especially what but even so, you have a thing like Kleinfelter's syndrome. So you don't know what you're talking about. You're not educated on genetics. Would you to discuss the genetics or well, no? Well, no, what no, are no. your genetics? Sir? I, I, so I'd stay away from the genetics and back to the brain scans. You cut that out now, or you'll go home in an ambulance. Yeah, that seems mildly inappropriate for a political discussion. No, I know. Well, yeah. but wait. To be fair, but to you, be, but to be fair, wait. But to be fair, you are. But to be fair, you're, you're being, actually being hey guys, kind of rude. You're and that, no, 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 and, and, and no, that's no, no. not fair. I'm sorry. It's not rude to say that someone who is biologically a male sir. is a male. You just someone who is biologically sorry. male is a male. But Mr. So. Shapiro, you know, you knew very well that what saying that to Zoe would be would be egregiously insulting. Hi, it's Tim from Morial TV and Morial Radio here live via Skype with James Jacob Prash. Jacob, our dear sister Heather had a question. She had had a conversation with a person who is an advocate for transgenderism and they bought up hermorphodites. Um, say a hermorphodite started attended, attending your church, would you treat them as male or female? Would they be discipled by a man or a woman? How would you counsel this person with regard to romantic relationships since this person is both genders simultaneously wouldn't any romantic relationship whether male or female be considered a homosexual relationship i know this is a complex issue but this is an issue the church will have to deal with because these people need salvation as well okay thank you for your question what i would need to do is first examine the question and then answer it so let's begin with looking at your question, first of all, Heather. We've talked before on one of our recordings about essentially you have double X, okay, which is female, XY, which is male, and the very, very, very rare phenomena of a double Y known as super males, uh, which almost never happens, but they have happened. And there is some good argumentation both biomedically and legally from the perspective of genetic science that such people are predisposed to becoming sex criminals if they are double Y it was actually presented as a defense in a case of a male sex criminal that he had a genetic predisposition to it for which it was not responsible because of this abnormality this birth defect where he was double Y but it's so rare you can almost ignore a double Y. So, we're talking about double X, X, Y. A hermaphrodite will not be different than anyone else. They will either be double X or double Y. It is genetically determined. This idea of transgenderism, 
is a folly in itself. It began in the 1960s and 70s. There was a psychologist. He was not a genetic scientist, and he was not a physician. He was not a genetic scientist, nor was he a physician, okay? Just a psychologist. In other words, the pseudoscience of, 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 of behaviorism. Yeah, his name, I think, was John Money. He first began to use or misuse gender, which had always been a grammatical term. It was a term of grammar and misapplying it as a clinical term and a biological term. Whenever you had a, meta, a question about health or identity, it said sex, male, female, didn't say gender. Gender had to do with masculine, feminine, and neuter in, in grammar in various languages. English being one of them, Greek being another, the gender, okay? What's the gender of it? Now, in Greek, okay, you can have males referred to in the feminine gender. For instance, Jesus is called a Petra. The feminine of rock was the in First Corinthians, okay? He's called Petra. Peter is called by the masculine form, Petros, at, uh, at uh, Caesarea Philippe, at Banyas. Okay, when Jesus said that word, Petros. And upon this Petra, I'll build my church, okay? In Greek... Gender does not necessarily correspond to sex. Masculines can be called by the feminine. It's not sex equals gender in Greek grammar, okay, and in various other languages. Another example, Jesus referred to the Holy Spirit as a person in the masculine. And he will remind you of all I taught you. He refers to him as male, or uh, in the male character, the male nature. People are made in our image, in his image, likeness of God. Jesus referred to the Holy Spirit as he. Okay. Ruach Kodesh in Hebrew, not a problem. However, we are also told our wisdom. He is our wisdom. Chokhmah is feminine in Hebrew. Thus, you can have, grammatically, something masculine being called feminine. What this, and you have traces of it in other languages. For instance, in Spanish, the word for map is feminine. Mapa. Mapa is map in Spanish, okay. But it takes the masculine article, el mapa, not la mapa, you say el mapa. <laughs> now, in grammar, it's clear that gender does not equal sex, necessarily. It may or may not be related to the sexual identity of the person or even the thing. We, in languages where you don't have a neuter gender, mainly Latin languages, some of them, okay, some of the Latin languages. No problem. What this guy, Money, did was he took something grammatical where you can have this convolution of sex and gender. And because something can be masculine and still called feminine or whatever, he began applying that genetically and biologically and clinically without even being a physician or a genetic scientist himself. Because of the invasion of science, unfortunately including medicine, by the pseudoscience of psychology. Now remember, we talk about this on certain of our recordings. Neuropsychology, biopsychology, and psychiatric medicine have a legitimate scientific basis because they study the relationship between cognitive skills and things like this and neurophysiology. 
Psychology does not. It's just looking at the behavior and isolation from the electrobiochemical processes of the brain. Psychologists don't know how to do CT scans or, or brain scans on, on people with bipolar and, and get differentiations in the clinical indications from a scan the way a psychiatrist or a neuropsychiatrist does or a neuroradiologist does. They cannot deal with the relationship between the organic and the behavioral. It's a pseudoscience. It's non-quantitative. It's garbage. It's not like neuropsychology, biopsychology, veterinary psychology, or psychiatric medicine. Straight psychology is a pseudoscience. Clinical psychology, is, I, in my opinion, it should not even be licensed or allowed. Psychotherapists should not be allowed. Those people are not medically qualified. Now remember, God breathed on Adam. He became a living soul. What humans are, differentiating, dif differentiating from animals. Oh, we have the holy breath or the divine breath. What we are psychologically, intellectually, emotionally, is a hybrid of what we are organically and what we are spiritually. Animals, it's purely a result of biology. Humans, it's biology and theology. It's what we are spiritually and what we are organically in a hybrid. Psychologists tend to be Darwinistic. They do not look at human nature from the point of view of Scripture. As we've said before, the book of Proverbs is biblical psychology. Now, there's much more to Proverbs than that, but Proverbs explains human behavior. It understands we are three-dimensional, a body, a soul, and a spirit, while in psychology, we're simply body and soul. We're simply apes with better DNA. They have a counterfeit spirituality from Jung's collective unconscious and things like this, and call young, but basically it's Darwinistic and it's two dimensional people. Scripture says we're made in God's image and likeness of a triune God, we're three dimensional. Hence, God breathed on Adam, he became a living soul. When his mental illness is either something chemically wrong, something spiritually wrong, or both. Mental illness does not originate in the mind. When somebody is mentally ill, there's either something organically wrong with them chemically or something spiritually wrong with them or some combination of the two. Psychology is fraud. It's rubbish, pure rubbish, apart from biopsychology, neuropsychology, etc. So you've got the psychologist who, who is not a scientist. He's not a physician. He's not a geneticist. He comes from the pseudoscience of psychology and behaviorism. That's where he comes from. Making gender a biomedical term, a genetic term, which it isn't. Because grammatically, in certain languages, you can have one gender and another sex biologically. <laughs> the whole thing is stupid. This infiltrated the sciences, including medical science, unfortunately. Part of the problem is Freud himself wasn't actually a physician. It gave a medical credibility to something that was pseudoscience from the onset. Be that as it may, or, or a false credibility, be that as it may, you have to understand that background when they use the term gender. They're misusing a grammatical term where in various languages, Gender does not equal sex. You can have one sex and a different gender. And they bring this into the realm of genetic science, of biomedical science. This is guy money. Now, take a hermaphrodite. They have anatomical properties of both sexes, but not co-equally. First of all, a hermaphrodite will still be either XY or double X. 
it will chromosomally still be a male or a female. That will determine their sex. Secondly, hermaphrodites are not anatomically bisexual in a fully developed manner. You can have hermaphrodites that have or are born in possession of a vaginal orifice, okay, and even perhaps a rudimentary a rudimentary presence of fallopian tissue and things of, uh, things of this nature, there may be possibly hyperproductions of estrogen. You know, estrogen, the female hormone, can be produced in the male kidney and things like this. There may be a endocrinological imbalance between their testosterone and their endocrine levels. And that can happen for various reasons. People who smoke too much pot can develop gynecomastia, um, tumors on their chest that can resemble a female breast simply because of depressed testosterone levels, ca causing the estrogen to begin to mimic mammary development in people who smoke a lot of cannabis. Um, this has been statistically recorded since the 1960s. Um, so you can have hormone imbalance, and you can have rudiments of sexual tissue and sexual organs of the opposite sex. But those are secondary there will not usually be menstruation. There will not be menstruation. There will not be the presence of ovum. There will not be the potential of fertilization or, or capacitation. There will not be the presence of hyper amounts of progesterone coming out of the womb uh, in, in a menstrual cycle. It's just not there. It resembles it but it doesn't have the full function. On the other hand, although the interstitial cells in male testicles may not be producing normal amounts of sperm through the urethra, you will still see a predominance of either male or female in a hermaphrodite anatomical. Now, I'm not sure when it grows anyone out here. But in a certain kind of hermaphrodite, the female urethra, in its position, uh, and I'm, I'm, just, I'm trying to put this very sensitively. You can have a naturally born, as a birth defect, enlarged clitoris, a clitoral enlargement that, that is congenital that resembles a male sex organ. Such women are in high demand in the lesbian community because they can have penetrated sex with another woman. I'm sorry, I'm not trying to be gross. I'm just trying to address the issues anatomically. But there will be the predominance of one sex anatomically. And it will be the sex which you are chromosomally either double X or XY. It's a birth defect like any other. You think of somebody born uh, hy hyperencephalic or microencephalic. Enlarged heads affects their brain. It's a birth defect. That's all. Hemophiliacs. It's a birth defect. That's all. It's something that happens embryonically, causing the baby to be born with certain abnormalities that may be chemical, anatomical, or both. That's all it is, is a birth defect. In some cases, it may be very minor. A case in point, I believe, is the daughter of Tony Curtis, that actress. Very minor. It doesn't affect their normal function. Uh, 
or it may in some cases even be rectified by surgical procedure. Corrective surgical procedure. In other words, you remove the organs of the opposite sex surgically in some cases. But it's a birth defect. I would go by what that person is chromosomally. Are they double X or are they XY? Are they chromosomally male or are they chromosomally female? If they are hermaphrodite, their anatomical structure of their reproductive organs will follow their, their chromosomal constituency, composition, will follow their chromosomal composition. They'll be predominantly male or predominantly female. The idea of somebody who can both procreate children by fertilization, being a male, having spermatozoa, or procreate children by having ovum as a female, uh, find me one case of it. Find me one case. They can't find you a case. Now, something else. As with the super males, extremely rare. Hermaphrodites, at least pronounced hermaphrodites, where there is an obvious presence of the sexual organs of both sexes. Again, it is a statistical anomaly. These people who take this line always try to make a rule out of the statistical exception or anomaly. They do the same thing with abortion. <coughs> what if the baby is the product of a rape? What if the baby has a, a diagnosed birth defect, a amniocentesis, or something like this? They take the statistical exception, the rare case, and they try to build an argument for the other 90 or 95 or 98 percent based on the one or two or most five percent that are the statistical anomaly. Now, finally, how to treat such people in the church. Jesus was not secret about those who were sexually deformed, either by nature or by procedure. If you can believe it, the Roman Catholic Church would actually emasculate young boys so they could sing soprano in a choir in a Catholic church in the Middle Ages. The Catholic Church actually did that. They would castrate young boys to make them be able to hit the high notes to, to, to decrease the testosterone levels so that the voices wouldn't change and they could still sing like a canary. This is crazy. It was done in the ancient world for guards of the harem, so the guards of the king or the suzerain's harem would not sexually violate his women. That was another case. You have a reference to this in the book of Ruth. Jesus takes this and says, there are some who are eunuchs for the sake of the kingdom of heaven. There's some who are not eunuchs for that reason, but there are eunuchs. There are sexually dysfunctional males for anatomical reasons. They are there. But Jesus didn't say treat them as women. He said treat them as units. They're a sexually dysfunctional male. They're no different than a 90-year-old male who, who suffers from ED. <laughs> He's past the point where Viagra... He took Viagra when he was 70, but it doesn't work at 90. I have a dear friend who <coughs> suffers from a type 2 diabetes, a very serious kind. It's affected his eyesight, predisposed him to gangrene, and his feet he has to be careful, but also it has made him sexually dysfunctional. But he loves his wife. He's a guy. He's a male. Just because he is sexually dysfunctional within his marriage due to a medical condition does not make him a girl. And he knows that and accepts that, loves the Lord, and lives that way with his wife, who's a very nice lady. Both of them committed believers, dear friends of mine, 
in Australia. All right, he's got a health problem, but that's all it is. So too are hermaphrodites. It's a congenital birth defect, a health problem. If the guy is sexually dysfunctional, he's what Jesus called the eunuch. Read what Jesus said about the eunuchs. No problem. The problem is created by people. It's no problem. Scripture tells us the truth. Science tells us the truth. Political correctness tells us a lie. I hope this answers your question, and I hope it was not technically boring. Thank you so much for asking, Heather. God bless in Jesus. Thank you, Jacob. <laughs>